Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. This is the third video in this series talking about uh, ocean circulation. So, you've, you, I've, I've shared with you uh, some of the uh, recent findings confirming the slowdown of the ENIMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturn Circulation, with, uh, as well as a slowdown in the uh, surface flow of the Gulf Stream. Now I mentioned that the AMOC, you know, the, when that water cools, gives off the heat, cools and sinks, there's a return flow south. This is the start of the conveyor belt. Now the conveyor belt is this ridden of, wa of water circulation within all the oceans, all the major oceans. So let's recap. You have the Gulf Stream, it flows up uh, off the eastern seaboard of the U.S. And, and the maritime provinces of Canada. It terminates in the Jin Sea, the Greenland, Icelandic, Norwegian Sea. As it gives off its heat, it becomes very dense because it's cold and salty, and it sinks. As it sinks, it's forming what's called the North Atlantic Deep Water, NADW. Eventually, the, the water will find its own buoyancy forces and it sinks to a, down to about a thousand meters or so and starts a return flow south. This return flow goes through the North Atlantic, the South Atlantic. There is a branch off into the Indian Ocean. And from there, it continues into the Pacific Ocean, where it will surface in some areas and sink back down, then flow back on the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean, making its way back into the Atlantic Ocean returning back from the South Atlantic into the Northern Atlantic. If one were to trace a one drop, trace this over, uh, you know, in this conveyor belt, it takes approximately about 580 years to make a loop to go back to the starting point. Now, why is this important? As I mentioned earlier, it brings warm water from the tropics to the poles. It returns cool water from the poles to the tropics. It is a major heat distribution mechanism for the planet. That's the importance of the conveyor belt. So that's why this recent findings of the slowdown of the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturn Circulation, along with the slowdown of the Gulf Stream is significant. This isn't one of these interesting scientific questions. This has direct major implications and ramifications uh, for the planet, for civilization. Okay. One of the things, as this water is flowing southward, okay, water is rubbing with other water molecules. That's friction. Friction results in heat. Well, if you now start putting heat, you're now what? You're making the water less dense. So some of this return flow starts to heat up. It starts to rise. As it rises to the surface, it's bringing with it any nutrients that might have sunk out of the photic zone, you know, micronutrients. And this water rises. And where does it rise? It surfaces in what we call the Antarctic Divergence Zone. The Antarctic Divergence Zone is in the Southern Ocean. And as it surfaces, it has all these nutrients. The phytoplankton go to town because you know they're in a photic zone, which is the, the, the layer of the ocean where sunlight penetrates to, but now they got all this nutrient. And they can photosynthesize to their heart's content. They photosynthesize, zooplankton graze on the phytoplankton, larger uh, organisms graze on the zooplankton, eventually you get krill, which are shrimp-like critters, and eventually you're gonna have the big baleen whales blue whales, fin whales, minke whales, and so on, hump, humpback whale. You can have the big baleen whales feeding on all these krill. That is a testament to the immense productivity found in this region of the ocean. In fact, the Southern Ocean is the most productive open ocean water area on the planet. Typically in the middle of the ocean, like the middle of the North Atlantic, they're biological deserts. Because you have the downwelling, I described in one of the earlier videos of the series. You have downwelling, but that brings the nutrients out of the photic zone. Not much use to the 
phytoplankton. Now, I'm not talking about the productivity of, of estuaries or coastal systems, where we have continual, uh, depending on the mechanism, you could have continual upwelling, bring continual uh, nutrients and productivity and so on. I'm talking about open oceanic waters. The Southern Ocean is the most productive open ocean region on the planet. So, we have that here. So now, what would happen if we slow down this overturning? You slow down the Gulf Stream. Well, as I alluded to in the previous video, you could affect the deep water formation. It, water may not even sink. It may just stay at the surface. Or if it does sink, not go as far vertically down. It may not move as fast. It will slow down in its velocity. It could eventually shut down completely. Now, if you shut this down completely, what happens? You have all the warm water staying in the tropics, all the cold water staying in the pole, in the polar regions. You don't have this heat distribution mechanism. Things begin to cool down. This can now lead to ice sheets starting to form and advance. And not only that, if you shut down this deep water formation, we don't have the Antarctic Divergent Zone. That ecosystem in the Southern Ocean collapses. All, there's no productivity there now. That collapses. Now, there was a gentleman who has done stellar, outstanding work for decades on this. His name is Wally Broker. Wally Broker, he's in his late 80s, and he goes to work every day. He is not retired. He is associated with Lamont Doherty at Columbia University. He wrote a book in the, I, I want to say 1973 it was published, might be 74, but it was in the early 70s, called Tracers in the Sea. And basically what he did was he, he demonstrated how we can use radionuclides to follow the movement of water masses. The work has never been improved upon. It is still the Bible, if you want to put it that way. It is still the go-to reference for people who want to learn about the different types of radionuclides, isotopes, and so on and so forth. As well as, you know, understanding where the water mat what the water masses are, where they flow from where to where, and so forth. It is major outstanding uh, amazing work and it, it's, it's used today to help us understand fluid dynamics in the ocean. Well, he has done a lot of modeling on this question about the Gulf Stream because that's, that was part of his work was, you know, looking at that's how he's able to determine North Atlantic deep water with, by, by following the tracers. And He's done a lot of modeling on what happens if we slow down the AMOC or if we shut it off completely. What happens to the conveyor belt? A lot of his models have indicated that if the conveyor belt were to shut off totally, that within 30 to 40 years it would, you know, it would stop totally and within that the, the northern hemisphere would start to dramatically cool down and would then help bring on the advent of an ice age. Now, I did an, uh, an early video about the Younger Dryas period, and I talked about one of the hypotheses being that this, there was this huge ice dam, freshwater dam, in the North America continent that was released, and all this freshwater flooded the Northern Atlantic, and it slowed down the conveyor belt and slowed down the Atlantic Meridional overturned circulation. Well, we're doing what? We're adding all this melt water from Greenland. It's doing the same thing. Wally Broker has shown in his models that it doesn't take much within three to four decades. It's like flipping a switch. It shuts off, and then we have an ice age. So that is why, and, and coupled with the evidence we're now seeing, this is why, you know, and I've been saying this for quite some time, that, in my opinion, global warming will bring on an ice age. It's because of this. It's because of the conveyor belt. Okay. 
So let's discuss this a little further. Now that I've given you a general background, let's discuss this a little further. What if the ocean's climate controlling? Notice what I say. Ocean's climate controlling. Conveyor belt came to a halt. Okay. Now you might recall there was this movie called The Day After Tomorrow. What are some of the things in there? Freak floods, drowning buildings, bone chilling air flash freezes pedestrians, ice encases the Statue of Liberty. Well, that was in the movie The Day After Tomorrow where they postulate the collapse of an ocean current in the North Atlantic sends the world into a whirlwind climate doomsday. Now, I will admit, I saw the movie, it was entertaining, and I have to admit that at least for the first bit of the movie, they kind of got the science right. After that, then it kind of went, it kind of went off the rails, but, but I, so they tried, they tried to get the science correct, and for the most part, they weren't too, weren't too off. Okay, but if the conveyor belt does collapse, this could very well happen with the ice sheets advancing and so on. While that particular ocean current, meaning the uh, Gulf Stream, the overturn in the North Atlantic, the Gin Sea, has not actually or completely collapsed, scientists are reporting in two new studies that it is weakening by a lot. And I've alluded to some of these already. In fact, the current hasn't been this sluggish in 1,500 years. Again, my second video alluded to that. Um, reinforcing these points. So these findings could obviously carry repercussions for uh, weather, climate, sea level rise, you name it. So, as I said before, the Atlantic Meridional Overturn Circulation brings uh, cool waters from the north to the south. It is a heat distribution mechanism for the planet. If this stops, the heat's not distributed, and then we're in for some interesting time. So, in one study, in the April 11 issue of the journal Nature, researchers analyzed ocean sediments in a core sample off the eastern coast of the U.S. from depths where most of the water originated in the North Atlantic Labrador Sea. Now, I should mention that the, there's the Labrador Current, which flows basically between Labrador, comes between Greenland and Labrador. It's some of the coldest water on the planet. But because it's coming off Greenland and it's a surface flow, there's a lot of freshwater input, so it's not as salty, so it stays as a, uh, as a surface current. In fact, it is that current that tends to bring a lot of the icebergs into the North Atlantic. One of those icebergs found a ship called the, you might have heard of him, the HMS Titanic. <laughs> and we know what happened to that thing. So they examined positions of different sized sand grains in the geologic record to reconstruct how the flow of the currents that carried the grains may have changed over time. This, uh, as put forth by study co-author Delia Oppo, who is a senior scientist in the Geology and Geophysics Department at uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, or HUI, as we sometimes jokingly call it. The researchers traced the start of the current's weakening to the mid-19th century at the end of the Little Ice Age, a centuries-long period of extreme cold that froze northern Europe. When temperatures began warming up, fresh water from melting ice that flowed into the Nordic seas would have diluted salty seawater near the surface. This weakened the current, prevented it from carrying bigger grains of sand as far as it used to, which told the scientists about differences in the current's strength. So said Dr. Opo. Then beginning in the 1950s, another stage of warming and ice melt began in the Northern Hemisphere this time driven by human uh, burning of fossil fuels, infusing the sea with more chilly fresh water and further weakening the ocean circulation system. This is by the study lead author, David Thornley, who I mentioned in the, in the previous video, who was a, uh, at, associated with the University College London. Theory and models show the AMOC weakens when there is warming and 
increased input of fresh water. And these are both being observed as part of global warming. The research team estimated that since the current began to lose strength in the mid 1800s, it has weakened by about 15 to 20 percent. In the previous paper, I mentioned 15, 16, uh, previous video, I mentioned 15 to 16 percent. Another study also published today in Nature arrived at the same conclusions about a week in AMOC, this time by reviewing sea surface temperature data going back to the late 19th century. In this study, the researchers temperature analysis confirmed computer models predictions of AMOC behavior and suggested a decline of about 15% in current circulation strength beginning in the 1950s. So we have two independent studies, both basically reaching the same conclusion and in essence in support of each other's findings. And I mentioned this gentleman in the previous video, Stefan Ramstorff. He's basis of the Evans, we're now able to provide the most robust to date. He's a professor of physics at, of uh, the oceans at Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research in Germany. The researchers detected an ocean temperature pattern that was a fingerprint for an AMOC slowdown. Anomalous warming in the Gulf Stream and cooler waters near Greenland, suggesting that warm water was not being transported north as effectively as it once was according to the study. The specific trend pattern we found in the measurement looks exactly like what is predicted by computer simulation as a result of slowdown in the Gulf Stream system. I see no other plausible explanation for it, Ramstorff said. These two research teams, they use different methodologies, but they arrived at the same conclusion. Because if we have a slowdown, then certain sized sediments will not be carried as far by the current. So they will be deposited and dropped off sooner. That's basically what the first study was showing. And if they're not traveling as far, it's probably because there was a cooler water, a slowdown in the, in the flow patterns, earlier deposition or uh, sooner deposition of the sediments. That's the essence of the first study. So the second study was indicating you have warmer temperatures increasing in the input of fresh water into the surface water from melting of land-based uh, ice and snow. <clears throat> surface patterns uh, slow down and we get a cooling down overall because the heat tr transporting mechanism is compromised. What's happening now is that the evidence is converging from different sources, Dr. Oppo said. So we're becoming more and more confident as we see several studies starting to show similar findings using different approaches. Now, they say that the complete disintegration of AMOC is extremely unlikely. I would reserve judgment on that. I is my opinion that if you decrease the salinity of the surface waters in the Gin Sea by a significant amount, you can completely shut down the AMOC completely. Some of uh, Wally Broker's uh, models have demonstrated this. Now, even if it does not completely disintegrate or shut down, the oceanic circulation system will continue to weaken. That is not very reassuring. Prior research has suggested that a feeble or weak AMOG brings more dryness to the Sahel, which is a region of Africa bordering the, bordering the Sahara Desert. It can increase sea level rise in U.S. coastal cities, because basically the water is not flowing away. It will encourage patterns of increasingly cold winters in Europe and the northeastern U.S., not to mention the changes in the Gulf Stream pattern where uh, sometimes the northeast was uh, colder than Alaska. Now what's interesting, it may have increasingly cold winters in Europe, but it could also prompt warmer summers across Europe. In other words, instead of being the climate being more moderate, there will be more extremes, so it will be colder and hotter, so that the, the differences from max to min will be more extreme, increased, as opposed to being 
more uh, closer together. But, of course, like everything else, th this re will require further research. A weakened AMOC does make the ocean less effective at absorbing atmospheric carbon dioxide. Now, there have been people saying, oh gee, the planet hasn't warmed yet, you know, you know, so it's all, the global warming is all, uh, you know, hogwash and so on and so forth. Well, I did a recent video uh, talking about uh, warming hiatus, not so fast. It turns out that a lot of the heat that was pumped into the atmosphere was absorbed by the ocean. If you have ocean movement, ocean movement increases mixing. Increasing mixing at the air-water interface, increasing mixing means we pull in more CO2 into the water. Well, if we're slowing down things, there's, there's, if the water's slowing down, there's less movement, there's less mixing. There's less mixing of the CO2 into the ocean. And that's basically what is being uh, mentioned here. If the ocean current continues to weaken, it will likely take up even less CO2, leading to higher quantities of CO2 in the atmosphere and worsening the effects of global warming. In other words, this, this sounds crazy. We're making the planet warmer, but at the same time, we're increasing the melting of the ice, which is adding cold surface fresh water to the ocean, slowing down the conveyor belt, if not shutting it down, that could lead to a drastic cooling down of the temperatures that could lead to an ice age. So it is like competing things, increasing warming, but eventually could lead to a cool down. So it basically depends what, where is most of the inertia in the system. Now, the one, now as I said, I, I am of the opinion that global warming will bring on an ice age. The one thing that could counteract an ice age from actually occurring is that if there is sufficient inertia in the Earth's planetary oceanic system right now, that could offset this cooling down. That is a possibility. It all depends. I, I, it'll be interesting to see, and I'm checking for research, looking into examining the inertia of the system. But otherwise, the fact that the AMOC is slowing down, the conveyor belt is slowing down, overall will not be a good thing. It will lead to, if nothing more, colder winters, drier, warmer summers. Which one takes over, the winters or the summers? the winters take over, we have an ice age. More research into the potential weather impacts of an AMOC slowdown and the associate sea surface temperature pattern is needed given the results of these two new studies, suggesting a weak AMOC that is likely to weaken further, Thornley told publication. So, uh, <clears throat> to sum up, The deep water formation is slowing down, which means the surface flow of the Gulf Stream is slowing down. The deep water formation in Jin Sea is the start of the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt brings cool water from the poles to the tropics, allowing the Gulf Stream to bring warm water from the tropics to the poles. It is a major heat distribution mechanism for the planet. You slow this down or shut it down completely, the heat distribution mechanism is no longer there. That could lead to a major cool down in Ice Age, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. I did an earlier video about the Snowball Earth Hypothesis. This was at a time when, it, when there was really no conveyor belt flow in the ocean because of the configuration of the uh, continents. And basically it was only volcanic eruptions that helped warm things up. I'm not saying this is, on the, this is a likely scenario in the future, but I'm just saying that the Earth being covered with ice, we know it has happened. So, and the other, really, that's not mentioned here, of course it's not immediately pertinent to the studies being here, is that if you stop the conveyor belt or slow it down, you affect the, uh, the, the productivity of the southern oceans. And that whole ecosystem can't collapse. 
Whether it slows down a little bit or completely, it still will be affected. So that's another area of, of interest that will be, the, is, the sudden, is the productivity of the Southern Ocean being uh, drastically affected? If this is starting to weaken, will that happen? So there are some studies here, the inertia of the system, productivity of the Southern Ocean, continued work on AMOC and what's going on. As I said, a team from Dalhousie University uh, measured a slowdown in deep water formation a year or two ago. They continue to do work on this. So um, there are things happening. And probably not going to be really good uh, for humans in the end. But anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this, this concludes this little three-part series of videos discussing ocean circulation leading up to the conveyor belt and what it might mean. I hope you found this informative and interesting. Uh, I consider this uh, uh, an area of uh, a paramount research that's required to understand this uh, question better. Um, please share this video. Uh, post it on, share it with your friends and colleagues on social media. Get the word out. Uh, please tell people the work I do here, the information I provide here uh, on this channel. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when I upload videos. I hope you will become uh, a supporter of my work by uh, joining uh, pat patreon.com patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa and become a patron. Support my work. If you're already a patron, thank you for your support and continued support. We'll talk soon.